We are here because there are toys here, and we like toys. It's kind of pathetic how we're middle-aged men who like toys. It's kind of it's kind of sad, actually, isn't it? A little bit. I mean, it's a lot of bit sad. I mean, what are you gonna do, though? <laughs> You're an idiot. Now I'm gonna wait till she fucking moves out, and then I'm gonna move into the basement. Ten bucks, huh? Not bad, not bad. Oh no, maybe I'm thinking about it. I should get those. Put all my Joes in them. I had that. Yeah, you did. You remember? I do. Just like most people my age. Well, not most people my age. Well, okay, just for like all my friends my age, all my YouTube friends my age. Look, we like to relive our childhood. That's it, bottom line. We like to relive, relive our childhood. I see a few things in here. I see a few things in here that it's like, oh, meh. see, I'm in the predicament of, look, I don't have any money on me, all right? Most likely though, the voice box is probably jacked because a lot of these kinds of toys back in the day, they, they, uh, the, um, the, um, what's the word I'm looking for here? Break. Huh? Break. The break? Oh, no, the, the, the talkie, the voice thing. What do, what do they call that? A talker. <laughs> Any good games? Not some good games, uh, just... I have them. How much are you guys asking for the, uh, the yellow email cases here? I don't know what it is about carrying cases. I'm getting more interested in them, especially the, the vintage ones from, from the toy lines that I love growing up. Dang, actually, I think I might have to get this one. I think I might have to do this. That's pretty cool. They're, they're 120 for this. Um, th this is actually cool. It actually has a little plastic inserts in the inside the case. This looks like the type of thing that would be missing or broken in a lot of these. So $20 I'm happy to pay. Look, I, I didn't really watch the cartoon growing up. Um, I didn't really have the toys growing up, but it's it's 80s, 90s, so it's nostalgia. So of course I pick it up. That's that's my thing with them. I'm not, I don't know. Like you, dude, you said, I think I'm gonna start collecting these. Okay, why? I'm not like actively looking for street sharks. If I'm, you know, if I see one, okay, maybe, maybe I pick it up. If it's like a buck or two, like what's your deal with them? That's the, That's the real question here. Okay, they're really cool figures, and that's it. All right, yeah, so I will do this in the ET. Uh, 25. 25. Sounds awesome. Oh, you actually have money? Yeah, I had money. Huh. So Melbourne actually has money at this thing. Total, complete shocker. Because he's an idiot. They created color forms for... Uh, pretty much anything, you know, your favorite cartoons growing up, uh, your different uh, toy lines and stuff had, had color form themed um, sets that you could play with uh, that kind of expanded the interest of this technology, if you will. <laughs> it's funny as David at one point, he says, I don't know the technology behind this. I'll have to get back with you guys. <laughs> people, what are the people, people like to call them shrinky dinks for some reason, but they're not. They're, they're little vinyl kind of sticker things and they came with the back. Actually, you know what? There's one right here. So this is a color form. This is not the color form I bought, but this just happens to be what I have in front of me. You had these little stickers here. These peeled off and you stuck them to, not gonna pull this thing out, but it was a, a scene, a fixed scene like this and you could stick the color forms wherever you want it basically. They were re-stickable. Um, I can't explain the technology right now. I'll do more research later and do a complete video another time but science dictates is he really making all that fucking noise back there yeah. good god man look just like that okay and then you can take it off because science for some reason says that these things will restick and then you put it right back over here and it sticks boom color form but what am i supposed to do i have to have the fucking volume up so we can hear i mean you ain't wrong so anyways, that's a color form. I did have a few of these growing up. I have a few of these in my collection. So I definitely am a player on these now. Jay comes across these color forms. Uh, I, I had a few of these as a child, but I honestly don't remember what they were. <laughs> as funny as that is, I can remember putting the things actually onto the, the sheets. 
I, I think it was Disney related, if I remember correctly. So I don't have a whole lot of experience with them, but they are one of those things that were staples in the 80s. And as, as simplistic as they were, they, they kept an 80s kid pretty entertained for hours on end. We, we, were, we were a simple folk back then. We are leaving, and I do actually see um, maybe about 80% of an Ewok village. I can do 15 for all of it. 15? Yeah. Uh, this is the type of thing. I've been kind of playing around with the idea of, of kind of customizing my own, like, like perfect Ewok village. So uh, if I can get a lot of the parts for cheap, um, I'm going to. And $15, I'm kind of happy with this. Very good. <laughs> You got ten dollars. Was that recorded? Yes, it is. The last couple. Luckily, at this point, I've I've bought too much. I I have to start borrowing from Jay. So, <sighs> I always look bad in these, don't I? I always look like like a son of a bitch. Kind of, yeah. The Ewok Village is a toy that had a lot of parts to it. Uh, a lot of parts that would end up going missing because, you know, kids are stupid and they lose their shit. So, uh, you know, finding one just complete, I imagine, is really hard. Board games is a huge part of my upbringing because you bought one board game and it was a present for six kids. So it was a cheap way for us to have some entertainment. Dude. Dude. <laughs> you are a nasty, disgust of motherfucker, dude. You're so fucking gross. So Ninja Turtles was so popular that they could literally just put anything in the world with the characters and the logo and it would sell. Case in point, they took the Universal Monster series and made Ninja Turtle hybrids out of them. One of them being Dracula. And uh, Jay has a thing for Dracula, I guess. I, I don't know. But he likes Ninja Turtles, he likes Dracula, so this is a match made in heaven. This is a match made in hell, I guess you could say. What do you think, you got water in there? And motherfucking like those those stupid sticks? The didgeroo sticks, like you fucking move it and it rain sounds? What are you, what are you doing? Yeah. I'm surrounded by literally the biggest bunch of freaking idiots in the history of, of ever. Why'd you zoom in on my crotch? <laughs> always something, always something with, with you. I've, I've been to better shows, seen better shows, um, but there was, there was some cool stuff here. I, I just didn't feel like pulling much money out of the, out of the ATM. In fact, I think Melvore bought my, uh, my accessories, so thank you for that. <laughs> Good God, man. No, despite his stupid looks, uh, and, and despite the fact that he's, you know, on screen for a couple of seconds, um, they decided to give him an action figure, uh, two different versions of an action figure. What makes the Snaggletooth so unique is that it's not the Snaggletooth, the version of the Snaggletooth that was released to the masses, to the public, as an individual carded figure. Um, now, when this, <clears throat> when this playset was being made, the movie wasn't out yet. So basically the sculptors had nothing to go on. They had a rough general idea. They kind of made him just really basically the same size as kind of the other characters. And that wasn't necessarily the case. Making this figure actually extremely hard to find. This is one of the rarer Star Wars figures out there. Even though one of us completely loses judgment and, and decides, oh, I'm not gonna get this thing that I, I know I, I should because it's a good price and I don't have it and I'm probably never gonna see it again in the wild. Um, the worst part of that though, is that usually the other two just kind of go into this, this brainless stupor and don't say, hey, what are you thinking? You're gonna regret that. You need to pick that up. Either that or the others just don't care, you know? But at, at this point, at least somebody is in the right frame of mind. And I realize Jay is really gonna regret this afterwards. It's about going out and finding things and, and finding it in that childlike wonderment and discovering a lot of the things we discover for the first time as adults that used to exist back then. Yeah. Like um, in an episode of Toy Chasers coming up, there was this particular toy um, 
there was a, uh, uh, you know what, why am I talking about it now? I'm going to be spoiling it. Can't talk about it now. Do that again. Do that again. Do that again. Hang on, Louis, stop laughing. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Hang on, hang on, here it comes.